Hello everyone! In our previous discussion, we talk about electron configurations. Electron is one of the particles of the atom which play a big role in the total package of the atom. Now, before we proceed with our topic, let me present to you our learning target. First, we're going to determine the number of valence electrons and the number of core electrons from the electron configurations of an atom. And also, we're going to predict the valence electrons, group number, and period number of an atom. Now, electrons can be divided into valence electrons and core electrons. When we say valence electrons, these are the electrons located in the outermost or highest energy level. While when we say core electrons, they are located at the lowest energy level. Now, how are we going to know how many electrons are present in the core electrons and in the valence electrons? Now, I am going to teach you how, but before that, let us have a recap on how to write SPDF notation. First, you have to write the main energy level, followed by the sublevel and the maximum number of electrons. Now, let's have an example. Sulfur with atomic number 16. The SPDF notation for sulfur is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p4. Now, based on the SPDF notation, can you guess what are the core electrons? Yes, you're correct. These are the core electrons. Why? Because as I mentioned a while ago, core electrons are electrons in the lowest energy level. Now, how about the valence electrons? Yes, you're correct. 3s2 and 3p4 are the location of the valence electrons. Because as you can see, among these energy levels, 3 is the highest energy level. Now, let us use the half-shell notation, where the shells represent the main energy level. So, for the first energy level, or for the first shell, we're going to put 2 electrons. For the second shell, we're going to put 8 electrons because 2 plus 6 is 8. For the third shell, we're going to put 6 electrons because 2 plus 4 is 6. Now, as you can see in this half-shell notation, the outermost shell is this one. Therefore, the valence electron for sulfur is 6. Let us have another example. Aluminum with atomic number 13. The SPDF notation for aluminum is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p1. Now, for the half-shell notation, for the first energy level or for the first shell, we're going to put 2 electrons. For the second shell, we're going to put 8 electrons because 2 plus 6 is 8. For the third shell, we're going to put 3 electrons because 2 plus 1 is 3. The valence electron for aluminum is 3. Now, did you know that the valence electrons give us the family number to where the atom is located vertically in the periodic table? For example, since the valence electron of aluminum is 3, we can locate it at family 3A. Aluminum is located at family 3A. Now, using half-shell notation, we can predict the period number to where aluminum is positioned horizontally in the periodic table by identifying the number of energy level present in the distribution of electrons. Now, as you can see, in this example, aluminum have three energy level. So therefore, the period number of aluminum is three. Let us have another example. Potassium with atomic number 19. The SPDF notation for potassium are 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s1. Now for the half-shell notation, for the first energy level or for the first shell, we're going to put two electrons. For the second shell, we're going to put 8 electrons because 2 plus 6 is 8. For the third shell, we're going to put 8 electrons because 2 plus 6 is 8. For the fourth shell, we're going to put 1 electron. The valence electron for potassium is 1 and therefore, vertically it is located at family 1A. And since potassium have 4 energy levels or 4 shells, it is located at the period 4. Now, let us check if it is correct. 
The valence electron for potassium is 1 and therefore vertically it is located at family 1A. And since potassium has 4 energy level, it is located horizontally at period number 4.